There was this thing that happened, it was the ad apocalypse, and basically a bunch of advertisers pulled out of YouTube. Now I'm now I get 200 million views, which is you know more than three times the amount of views I was getting before, but now my paycheck is under two thousand dollars. In the last decade, our world has become a bit different. The internet has brought us new jobs we never thought possible. Streamers, YouTubers, TikTokers, digital artists of any medium. But the opportunity for financial fame and online success seems amazing. Until you see... While YouTube pays something to their creators, other platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter pay nothing. TikTok has only just begun paying its most viral stars, and even Patreon, the subscription platform explicitly aiming to pay creatives fairly, takes a cut of creators' earnings. These artists, chefs, singers, community leaders, you name it, pour all their energy into these careers with little hope of seeing a financial return, while these platforms are guaranteed content. Which brings us to question, in the long term, how sustainable can this model be. So when you look at creators and the economies that they're building and scaling on these platforms, what you inevitably see is that uh, platforms actually end up competing with those creators um, and their economics. And in some instances, many instances, end up demonetizing them. We've seen this with Instagram with, you know, getting rid of likes, you know, this was the main currency of that platform. Uh, YouTube effectively now, you know, demonetizing their creators and having a say in what they can or can't post. Now, we must admit, of course, we use these free services to connect with others and build our brands or communities. But without an alternative, creatives have become imprisoned by these platforms, which make money off of your data rather than the other way around. And of course, wishing this man at the top of Facebook. Yeah, someone asked me, do I smoke meat? Smoking meat, smoking these meats, smoking meats. Would change his entire business model to benefit us itty bitty creatives is futile. Which means the solution to creator compensation likely lies elsewhere. This search brings us to the cryptocurrency community, as various startups are trying to recreate a new financial ecosystem where they can exchange value without a middleman. For instance, Instead of likes, Scent.co allows you to support a creative in the form of cryptocurrency by discovering them per the creative's post. But another startup goes even further. By acting like a stock exchange for internet culture, Roll allows creators to mint their own cryptocurrency, giving them a way to monetize themselves independently. Uh, what we're witnessing right now is a shift uh, from user-generated content to what we identify as the next phase, which is user-generated capital. The idea of people being in control of their own economy through their own monetary system, their own social money, as we call it. And Roll is a platform for social money, quite simply. Uh, we allow any community, uh, any digital creator, to brand their own digital currency in their likeness towards their community. We then give them the tools to simply use that currency, that social money, on the platforms of their choice, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, OnlyFans, Spotify. All of these types of creators are on roll, who all create their own social money. And with this process, we give creators their own cryptocurrency, which grants them the complete control of their network. Patreon can't skim 10% off the top, and YouTube can't wield demonetization. The value they create on the web is completely independent of Instagram followers or Facebook likes. And in theory, from here on out, you'd only need a loyal audience to grow your income. Additionally, there's a new incentive developed for fans. Like any cryptocurrency, there's a chance to see its value explode. And instead of buying merchandise, you can buy a Dobrik dollar for 10 US dollar and watch it triple in value. This means massive gains for Dobrik and his token investors. All of this sounds promising, right? But with bold visions come tough questions. For example, it's easy to create your own token. Just sign up with Roll, pick a name for your token and a symbol for it. But the question is, is it too easy? 
Roll may democratize access to cryptocurrency, but the world of cryptocurrency remains extremely complex. Creators can raise money as if they were their own stock, but to turn that money into your spending cash is an elaborate process, which includes three separate currency exchanges going from your token to Ethereum to finally US dollar. This process leaves young investors and naive creators potentially vulnerable. Like any currency or stock, the price can change rapidly, and any individual holding the token may find it incredibly difficult to keep their price of the token stable. Raising the question, will the average individual or creative understand this risk? Beyond the assumed level of risk that comes with any new radical idea, Roll's solution is a compelling one. Given America's mass inequality and the continued need for job growth, the opportunity to put earning power in the hands of artists, creators, and communities is invaluable. With these breakthroughs, we can now imagine a world where creators can finally earn what they're worth. Instead of money flowing to a few hands at the top, a decentralized internet may finally be achieved when creativity across the world can be monetized easier than before.